Hello and thanks for joining us. This week, the soprano who's going from dancing with stars to dancing with bears and the standoff between the king and the crown. Well, at Tarangawaiwai last week, Iwi and Hapu responded to a call for unity on water rights from the Maori king, King Ituhaitia. The king's hui passed resolutions calling for a halt to state asset share sales and the negotiation of a nationwide framework for the resolution of Iwi and Hapu water rights issues before Iwi and Hapu proceed with their settlements. The Prime Minister's response, well, the government won't negotiate a nationwide water rights settlement and it's unlikely to delay the asset sales program any further. Well, it sounds like a standoff, but is it? That's the question I'm taking up with the King's spokesman, Tuku Roy Rangi Morgan. Well, welcome, Tuku. Good Tell me, where are things at? There's been some pretty blunt exchanges going on. So exactly where do things stand? Are you going to communicate with the Prime Minister and tell him what the resolutions were? So we, uh, we still have the set of resolutions that uh, were confirmed and agreed upon at the Hui on Thursday. Uh, there is no doubt there is a need to convey those resolutions to the Prime Minister. And uh, I'll do that in the next few days. Okay. What, but the, what uh, precisely were the resolutions? I'm only going on the news media accounts of it. So precisely what, there were three as I understand it. So were there were, uh, uh, the key issue was that we must unite. Yes. And in order, uh, uh, we must unite on the basis that we had to have our proprietary rights um, declared, defined, and then recognized by the Crown. Um, before they could advance their intention to sell. And it was also um, uh, to give support um, uh, to, um, uh, to the recommendation that Iwi and Hapu, who are currently negotiating their claims before the Crown, should wait until those proprietary rights are defined. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I guess uh, the other issue is, is that having a regard for the very uh, uh, the variety or the kind of water classes, uh, whether it's geothermal, uh, aquifer, rivers or whatever, uh, the definition of water was wide and diverse. And the last uh, recommendation was um, that, that should, should the negotiations with the Crown in relation to the recognition of proprietary rights before the sale fails, then the owners force to the iwi and hapu to provide funds. Can I get this term proprietary rights pretty clear? Yeah. Does this mean what are the specific interests that Māori have that has to be taken into account, or has it got some other meaning? Uh, it's 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 the f I guess the wide ranging definition of rights and interests. So there are a bundle of rights. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you go to the Treaty of Waitangi, it speaks of Taonga. Yep. And Taonga, of course, is It didn't stop at fisheries. No, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't <laughs> Which is it what didn't, the Prime Minister said. Well, that's right. It didn't stop at land, um, you know, forests, and so on and so forth. It also included yeah. Taonga. Yeah. And, and the Prime Minister has conven uh, uh, conveniently forgotten that part of the Treaty of Waitangi. Which is unfortunate because it was a major portion of the uh, arguments about uh, the preservation of Tereo by broadcasting. Absolutely. And spectrum rights. That's right, yeah. that's right. But, uh, but I, uh, uh, you know, I guess the key thing here was a very uh, clear and, uh, and transparent message of the Crown that actually they had to sit with Māori. They then had to to ensure that our definition of rights and interests were clarified and then recognised by them. Okay, so in this order for the wasn't sale to actually go. settling particular claims that were being made. It no. was to establish a framework for the settlement of claims. Yes, uh, so it, it, was, it was to establish a set of principles uh, from which um, a framework could develop f from. Yep. And so uh, those principles included uh, uh, the right to develop, the right of, of of Kaitiakitanga and a whole lot of bundle of rights that have been amplified uh, in various cases uh, before the tribunal. Okay, so, now, now the resolutions went from the Hui to the Iwi leadership group, as right. I understand it. Yeah. How were they received by the leadership group? So We've had again, uh, I'm only judging by news reports, and the mm. news reports indicate that about one out of three got through. There was support for the resolutions. 
but uh, that was couched in the context of we're going to go home, we're going to talk to our people, and then we'll come back and have another discussion. But uh, they recognise, uh, the iwi leadership around the country recognised the need to unite on the issue of water. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they wanted to have their day and their time with their own people to uh, to look at the consequences and the implications that those uh, uh, resolutions brought to bear. That in itself didn't contradict the king, did it? Because the king was conscious of the fact you can't bind Iwi and Hapu to do things no. in the way that could be done if this was a, a Pākehā meeting. Yeah, no, no. You can't do that. Look, um, uh, uh, the king is absolutely aware that in the end, treaty claims have to be settled, or claims, <coughs> whether they're modern or, uh, um, modern or historic, they have to be sorted and resolved by Hapu and Iwi. Okay. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But I guess uh, the bigger issue is how do we unite on the issue of water? Mm -hmm. Because water is, is the single most significant issue to face mm -hmm. Māori mm -hmm. bigger than the seabed foreshore, bigger than fish. This I guess goes to the heart of our very existence and and, and for a tribe like ours, David, Waikato Tainui, we're the only tribe that take our name from a river. And 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 we've had a relationship with the river mm. since time immemorial. Mm. We are you know, in a, uh, uh, the people in and the river are inextricably bound. So there's a you know, there's a deeper meaning for Waikato Tainu and for iwi across this country in relation to waterways, rivers, streams, aquifers, and so on and so forth. Why weren't the water rights issues to the fore much earlier than this in the, in the whole treaty claims process? I mean, the land issues considered, mm. settled. Your own Waikato River mm. was considered. Yes. Why didn't this crop up as an issue before? Now? Actually, we raised it. Yeah. So, uh, so in the settlement of the Waikato River, there's a section of the Act that, that speaks to ownership. And should the Crown decide to sell one of its um, assets like Mighty River or Genesis that sit on that river, then we've got to have a conversation around who owns the water. And that now, that, that's a, that's that entrenched. Time. That mm -hmm. was discussed at that time. And of course, ownership, ownership or issues of proprietary rights were always going to be difficult. And so those those issues were too, uh, too, too tough to do at that time. And, and, and when Lady Iha and I were at the table, the, the negotiation table with both the Cullen, the, the Deputy Prime Minister at the time, and also uh, Chris Finlayson in this present government, uh, uh, we couldn't get there on proprietary rights, but we got there on co-governance. Okay. What do you expect the Iwi and Hapu and Waikato Tainui to do when the government comes knocking and saying, we want to talk to you about shares? Yeah, well, uh, uh, the key issue is, is that we've got to be united under the call of the king. The king has said in a very responsible and transparent way to Iwi across this country, we must unite. We must actually um, continue to talk about how we can do this. And, and underpinning uh, that, that ongoing conversation, David, is a earnest desire to um, design a much more cohesive strategy so that we might mm -hmm. unite on the issue of water and how uh, the government framework impacts on us. If you don't unite, isn't there a prospect that in fact you will have an eternal process of one claim triggering another want a wish to relitigate a claim that has already been dealt yeah. with, uh, and th this will just backfire through the whole system. It's it's the reason why we think that it is the most significant issue to face our yeah. people, because uh, it's a minefield, and, and and unless we sort it properly and appropriately and intelligently, it's going to um, you know it's going to have a domino effect all the way through um, the claims process and that's a uh, that's a problem no one wants. Now you said that it was inevitable that court action would be taken. Yeah. What's so inevitable about that? What's making it inevitable? Uh, that the government um, adamant uh, that 
their, uh, their um, you know, proprietary rights should be dealt with head to head with Iwi right now, rather than having a conversation with all of us. Uh, the problem that we have uh, here, David, is that the the Crown is resolute in their uh, you know in their position, unmoving in their position, to sit down and have a have a conversation mm. with with a with a pan tribal um, group of people, and that's uh, that's unfortunate actually because water impacts on every Māori, whether they are living in the city, whether they're iwi uh, or hapu, or whether or not they're a farmer. Okay. And so what we've always said is that talk to the collective. We know that in the end, uh, the negotiations, the final negotiations must be with Hapu and Iwi. But let's have a conversation right now before we get there. But let's also define our proprietary rights, the bundle of rights that our people um, uh, have. have. Interested. Yes. Okay. The government says it's not going to negotiate a nationwide settlement yep. of water claims. That's not what you're calling no, for. No, no. You're calling for a settlement about the principles that right. will underpin that's right. individual settlements later. Yeah. And that, now, is that a message yeah. that the Prime Minister well, uh, has made? That's, uh, that's a message actually that uh, that we've sent, but but uh, uh, the government refuses to listen to, because actually refuses uh, this is or just hasn't understood. Uh, just well. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I think it's a bit of both, actually, uh, because uh, we've had a number of people uh, say publicly, actually, why don't we sit, get the definition of proprietary rights out, and then and then and uh, and then go to um, a set of principles, and we all know that that uh, that, nego uh, that negotiation is the art of the possible. We think actually we can get there, mm -hmm. but the government are moving. And that's unfortunate. Tell me this, um, you're first on the block, really, because uh, Māori River Power is Waikato Tainui yeah. District. It's your river catchment that you're concerned about. Mm. Could a framework actually be settled before the date that that asset is currently oh, scheduled absolutely. to be sold? Absolutely. I think, uh, uh, you know, as I say, negotiation is the art of the possible. And there has to be some compromise from both sides. What what uh, what we're up against is an uh, you know is a government that's unmoving in their determination to uh, to uh, to run another track. All we want is have the proprietary rights defined, and then let's get to a set of principles. And I think that uh, that will go a long way to appeasing the kind of mounting concern and 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 nervousness that's out there amongst our people. Took a Roy Rangi Morgan. Thank you very much. Tuku Rorangi Morgan, spokesman for Kingi Tuhetia. Coming up, someone who's moved from barbershop quartets in Western Australia to centre stage at Sydney Opera House and from Dancing with Stars in New Zealand to Dancing with Bears in the NBR New Zealand Opera Company's latest production.